Welcome to the Three Piece Podcast, a show where three Call of Duty amateurs discuss player development to improve your in-game performance. New episodes every Monday at 7 a.m. EST to start your week off with a scoop of inspiration. of the three piece podcast today we have a special guest xy zinks one of the best players in all of last year modern warfare let's see how he's keeping the ball rolling and going into call of duty cold war jordan how you doing today my man good how are you we're all good man what have you been up to lately uh minecraft and valorant <laughs> minecraft valorant i see i had, I had yeah I had like a a two week break where I just slept after MW, um, really so. but I tried I tried playing like a couple of throwbacks. Just wasn't that fun. Um, I might like get back into it a little bit like in October, like after the betas. But other than that, like I'm just trying to relax. Like pretty so much what I'm do doing. It. Like I don't want, I don't want to stress. Like yeah, no, I stress no. enough in COD. Mm. So. so were you just chilling over the alpha? Were you playing any uh, kill race wages, or were you just? Anything. I was trying to chill. I was trying to chill until the skill based matchmaking hit me. <laughs> I try hard at all the first day, not realizing the next day is that's gonna punish me. Yeah. Like me and me and Llama yep. like were grinding it together and uh Yeah, we got punished the second day. It was it wasn't fun. Yeah, a lot of people. Like I was scrimming all day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so. yeah, no. I, I saw you were having some of the same thoughts that pretty much everybody else has in the community right now. It's like there needs to be that rank play and then that casual kind of yeah. play. So obviously, yeah. I seen a few. No, no, keep yeah. going. I I seen a few people say like they liked it, and they're just like, "You're just lying for Twitter likes or something." Like <laughs> you're trying to be cool. Like no one likes this. Yeah, like fucking up. We want ranked. Like we don't want this. Like yeah, no, for no. sure. Um, <clears throat> shoot, I was I forget what I was getting ready to say before you started talking. Um, yeah. So obviously, there's the rank play that was in World War Two, but. Did you ever play back in Black Ops 2, or tell us kind of like your in-depth story from how you picked up gaming, <clears throat> you know, not just the story you tell on a Deserto um, interview, like the in-depth, what you tell your grandkids. Uh, I mean, I played in BO2, like, I played since, let's say, in MW3, <clears throat> I played before, like, I was on PS3 in MW3, and then I switched over. Uh, like, I've been playing, like, just eight to the same circle for, like, years, um... I think like seven, eight years now. Um, and that same circle ended up when I turned 18 in IW, I went uh, to the first event with those guys. So, like, um, that's kind of like where I started. I played the BO2, like, ranked. Okay. Well, like, World of Two ranked. Those, those are the two best ranked. Okay, um, yeah, no, like, I tried playing in AW, it didn't really work out. And Smite came out, so I just granted Smite all year. Um, in BO3, I almost went to, I think it was Orlando, UMG Orlando, that got canceled by the hurricane. That would have been my first event, but I ended up going to Vegas, and I just started off from there and just made my way up. So, and, uh, I mean, I sh- I could have gone to the LCQ in, um, Infinite Warfare, but I decided to play H1 competitively for in some idiotic reason. Um, and then the next year... I made the mistake of buying an account, uh, and someone else bought an account with me, but I won't say his name. And I ended up getting banned at the end of the year, like right before, like, like a week before Anaheim. So I was like, I went like I spent like four hundred dollars going to Anaheim just yeah. to end up coaching because I couldn't play. Um, so I think like those two things like stunted my career. Like I could have been like I think I could have been like a little bit, you know, farther up if uh. Those two things didn't happen. So, like, my career didn't really take off until, like, I would say BO4. That's where people, like, knew me. Mm-hmm. So, since yeah. they're just making your way up. Yeah, I was going to ask when you really decided to start taking it serious. You said it was back in around the Black Ops 4 that things really started to take off. Yeah. But when was the you... point that you knew that this was what you wanted to make a career out of, that this is what you wanted to go with? Um... Probably World War Two, because IW, like I said, like I literally just nonchalantly like didn't go to the LCQ. Like that was yeah. a terrible mistake. Now, but like World War Two <laughs> is when I, you know, started to like really, um, you know, want to do that. 
tell my parents like that's kind of what I want to do. Try, you know, I would like I would tell them like how much people are making. T- try and you know make them like you like think about it, support mm-hmm. me, which they do. Um, yeah, was, I would say World War Two. Uh, I'm curious because you said uh, like you were just speaking on that World War Two is kind of the year that you uh, I guess took it more serious or kind of like realized that this could be something that I could do as a career. Um, and I'm curious from World War Two to now, um, I guess going into Cold War, Cold War, how has like kind of the community shifted like through the years? Like what what I mean by that is like from like the people I guess you've been playing with and how, like when that's changed, how has kind of I guess like the practice and like kind of like all the small stuff change like what the, like the quality of scrims like what, kind of like all that um well from one or two to now like the am scene is definitely ran by little circles and like like i was i tweeted somebody like someone was saying like i have no team offers and i told him like saying like being good is not enough like you can't just be good you need to be friends with people you need to um expand yourself just you know just expand your friend circles and for a while, I didn't do that. Instead, I talked shit to those circles. And for a while, I didn't have any, like, you know, nothing in the community. Like, n- no way to work up. I just shit talked to everyone. Um, <clears throat> but I would say, like, practice-wise, uh, M- like, this MW this year, like, it went to a whole other level. Like, BO4, we didn't... I made a chat, actually. I was the one that, like, made our scrim chat towards, like, the last two events. And it wasn't anything like this year. Like, we would just type in there for the day saying, like, yo, who wants to scrim today that's all we did um but mw like was the first time that we really like stepped it up um naga he got with someone and made the 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 scrim sheet that we had and like i had made another chat and we had like two separate chats we had a chat where it was like like the six like top 16 like 32 teams and then it was like the top 10 where like all the pro coaches would be and we would every sunday we would schedule our scrims for the week and that's that we would do that every single week and scrim from 2 p.m. to uh, like we had a 2 p.m. 4:30 and a 7 p.m. and that was like I hope we do that this year like that kept everything more professional everything on track it made people like more like uh, responsible for being late you know it wasn't just be like oh we said to get on at six o'clock like no there's an actual schedule now like right um, it made the am scene a lot more professional especially like we for we we forced that schedule because pros wanted to play us because you know a lot of pro teams at the beginning weren't playing, um, and we were playing a lot more and so they wanted to scrim the teams that were playing a lot more and so we like adapted to that schedule. Um, so I, I mean it it just makes everything more professional. I just hope we stick to that. So I was curious going on that. Um, you had said there was kind of like a T sixteen limit to like that group chat. So with COD going from five v five to four v four. Do you see that group chat maybe expanding a little bit bigger? It definitely will expand, and it's also like also egos, and little circles. Like some like some people won't get added for a while. Like uh, what was it like the Draza the Kaiser? Like that team at the beginning of the year where they were getting like really they were doing really well in the tournaments. Like the two Ks, they weren't getting, they weren't like getting added in the T10 chat. It's just because people thought they were booting or cheating or whatever. Like you know, just fucking stupid excuses. Um. Yeah, nobody was adding them. Like, there's just shit like that, and shit like that's gonna happen this year. I, I don't know, like, um, I don't know who's gonna make the chat or anything or how it's gonna work, but it'll definitely be bigger, especially with however many you know pro players are gonna be out. Like, I know a couple teams I can't speak on, but I know a couple teams are gonna be playing now in the challengers, and it's like a lot more. It's not gonna just be top ten AM teams, like, cause there. I mean, last year, like towards the end of the year, there was like, I'd say like seven to eight different teams that could have won champs and then there was like 14 different teams that could made it like actual actually interesting like uh it's definitely gonna expand it's not gonna be just e 10 anymore or if it is it's gonna be all the pros just like taking the people out so with it being a lot of new people coming into the scene and a lot harder to um kind of get into those groups like you were saying it is a lot more about politics and stuff what are some ways that people that feel that they are getting blacklisted can still try to come up, if any? Or do you think that the only possible way is to kind of get on the good terms with those people in those chats and to make it up through that? Um, you definitely need to, like, make friends. I mean, like, 
I, I see players that sit there and they just, like they tweet out they have no offers, and it's the same people who are like just stick to themselves. Like I stick to myself for a while, and I finally expanded. Like I expanded my friend circle, and it got me to where I am. Like just knowing the certain amount of friends, I've almost quit two times at NW, but I had certain friends pick me back up, and I'll go win a two K with them or something, or just do good with them. Like, um, but like I see these good players, they're really good. Um, and did well last year, and they don't have any offers because they just, they're not friends with anyone else besides their little circle. Like, so. Yeah, so obviously the, the circle plays a big part into it, and obviously the, your gameplay also plays a big part, but what do you think yeah. plays a bigger part? There's always kind of the debate name over skill, but what do you personally think is someone at name. such a top level? Name? Friend, friendships, because literally, honestly, most, most, most of these AMs are about around the same skill like i mean there's a few people that are you know like awakening there's like mac there's people that are you know the notch above but mostly everyone's around the same skill and it really just is like friendships i mean there's i mean almost all the people who got picked up last year was through a friendship like yeah they had the skill but it was through a friendship like there wasn't really anyone i think besides awakening who got picked up because he was actually like skill wasn't someone vouching for him or a friend like Mm -hmm. um i think i think like who you know and like your stock and everything like like i think you're who you know is more important like your friends and whatnot you know i I would definitely agree because at least my experience uh being in the cock community for a while i mean this is my first year um being 18 so i've never actually competed at the major level but from the things that i picked up at least in my opinion um i'm sure you have your own opinion on it but it feels a little feels like AMs are kind of railroaded and like t- their options to kind of make it. And I feel like they're always fighting like an uphill battle. And I'm curious with uh, like for you, like your opinion on this, because um, when we've looked at like people that have gone packed, picked up in the past few years, I mean, we see like Simp and Illy and those like kind of like um, unignorable talents that like kind of made like a career through S&D. But I'm curious, like just strictly coming up um, from the bottom to the top in the AM scene, like do you think um, there needs to be a change or something um... going on? I mean, I would like to say that it needs to be a change, but it can't be. It's just how it is. Um, there, there really is no other way. I mean, if you're really good, you're gonna get picked up, like, uh, like Awakening. I mean, like, it just depends on how. Like, you have to have some luck, too. You know, like I've had teammates all around me start getting picked up. I have team with Kismet. You know, uh, fucking Awakening. Like, it, it's just like, um, you, you might be getting lucky too. Um, yeah, like, I don't know. Do you think, uh, do you think, um, kind of like doing what E6 did back in IW, just like kind of sticking like a core four and just like grinding it out is like the way to go? I feel like that doesn't really happen often. Well, but. now it's the way to go. I would say like when I was coming up, I would, I didn't want to do that. I, I don't think anybody really like wants to do that. Like, like people have a bad idea of like trying to find their perfect team when they're a nobody or have like no stock, like. Like when you're when I was like making my way up like through IW World or two like I essentially would like and I mean some people don't like this but I essentially would be on a team and um, I wouldn't be playing for my stats or anything but like if I played against a better team I'd make sure they recognize that so I could be on a better situation in the next event and that's what kind of what I was doing I was just like what I mean by working my way up um, but now like at this stage like you you want to have that long term like team like it's I mean it's better for yourself it's better for placings if you are a good team. Um, and you, yeah, you definitely do fun. Like, I think when expansions happen, like, let's say that phase team happened this year, the phase Academy team, like those guys would all, I think would all guarantee spots. I mean, I, I don't know what they're doing now, but like, let's say they don't have spots and they do that all this year and have success like that this year. Um, uh, they'll all guarantee spots. Cause I mean, apparently there's gonna be like four to eight expansion teams next year. So like a lot of spots are going to open up. Um, and I don't see, I mean, there's going to be a lot of these pros that are coming down that'll have those spots but a lot won't a lot this 44 going like going from 55 to 44 it's it's kind of and i mean a lot of people aren't gonna like this but it's kind of like uh it's gonna show which players are kind of playing past their time um and a lot of these i mean a lot of people are gonna come down to the mc and just think they're gonna run everything and it's really not gonna be like that uh it's fucking it's a pit down here um yeah so with it being that pit and there's so much room for competition and so many other names to be picked up by these organizations, what ways do you personally think that 
you bring assets to an organization or what do you feel um, like you going for you? Well, I mean, not much now, but I really want to grow grow it this year. I couldn't stream a lot this year uh, in NW, like just because of roster situations or <clears throat> like I don't really like streaming on a team that's like either one that doesn't have someone that doesn't want to stream, which I had at the beginning on Aspire, or like mid year where um, I was like I was being an ass and I was still growing as a player. Um, and then when I got to my really good team at the end of the year, I couldn't really stream much because we had a freaking different every a different fifth every other week. So when that week I was ready to stream, that Sunday I find out I have to get a new fifth, and I don't like streaming when I get a new fifth. You know, I like to get in with that uh, that person first. Um, wait, what what was the question you asked me? I totally uh, I was, just I was bringing saying like, what are some assets that you bring to an organization? Oh, like you brand, literally brand. It's uh it, the whole mental thing. It's your brands like it's so huge. That's why this year I want to work on like my brand streaming the back line. Like I want to work on all that. I mean, it definitely grew this year. I mean, I you know random people were tweeting back line or tweeting front line in their clips. Uh, like I, I definitely like where I'm going in that direction, but I need to grow that a lot more for a franchise. Like I need to not be an ass this year, stay consistently on the top as a many are and just grow that brand if i grow that brand like that'll guarantee me more of a spot than like my actual skill mm -hmm. so i need to do that so that's what i have going for me and a lot of people need to have that going for them or start working on that and they don't um i see a lot of players that are just overlooked for because of that or because of their friendship or whatnot mm -hmm. um so, yeah so what do you think is the most <clears throat> underlooked or I guess I guess overlooked would be the right word. Um, right, the most overlooked aspect of a teammate that you've personally ran into that you think people just kind of brush off to the side, they don't pay much attention <clears throat> to you that you think deserves a lot more time of day. Um, their winning capability. I think Stamino has the most winning capability in the entire scene, and yet people are sketchy on them left and right. And it was pretty idiotic because every single time someone did, uh, they got outplaced by us, or like we outplaced them and did better than them. And, uh, <clears throat> like, I went to this year, I was going to make a team, actually, uh, I guess it didn't happen, so I can say this, but I was going to make a team with, uh, Cells, Mock, and the number one person we wanted was Stamino, because we both are friends with him, but he, we also know that he knows how to win. He was, like, the most earned player last year, and, and for NA, Challengers, like, he, out of all the people that kept leaving him, he somehow kept placing good. Like, that's just got to be, like... I don't know, that's I think he's the most overlooked player. Like that's like that's an insane stat to have. Mm -hmm. so, um yeah. Okay. So <clears throat> you were saying earlier that you had some hard times and you know some things that you have to work on personally as a player as in <clears throat> you know being a little bit less of a dickhead to your team or whatever have you. But what are some of the hardest obstacles that you've overcame <clears throat> since you've started competing whether it has to do directly with call of duty or <clears throat> it is caused by call of duty etc whatever um and how did you get over those um <clears throat> i think there was like two <clears throat> mainly that uh or actually three kind of okay <clears throat> uh sorry um eo4 i went to the poq i left my vegas team which like we didn't end up like doing as well as we should have but we were like, it was a good, under, under a good org. It was a good team that I could agree with more. It was like, it was Mir's team. So like that, like we were doing good with, I was, if I was doing good with that name, it would have helped me. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, but when I went, I took the POQ offer uh, for the NLP team and us going there. And like, even though I, you know, I didn't do bad, like as a team, we got shit on mm -hmm. um, that. I think that hurt me. And like for months after, like it was a struggle to find teammates. I even... For Fort Worth, I had a team, and I joined it. I think we were a team for, like, two weeks, and, like, there was a person on that team that didn't, like, that. there was a person on that team that needed minions. I'm not a minion. Or I didn't learn to be a minion at the time, or I'm only a minion for people I respect, I guess you could say. And uh, so I got dropped right before the event. And so, like, first event ever where I had to actually go to the event with randoms, I had to think, like, should I even go? Like, I was, like... Should I even go, or should I go, like, and just place bad with, like, random people? And I ended up going, and that was, like, a real, that was a low for me. Like, I mean, I had a good time with the people I went with. Um, I have nothing against those guys. And, I mean, I didn't even place horrible, but, it, I mean, it was, like, <clears throat> it wasn't that. It was, for, 
counting the old placings, like it would have been bad. But with like the pros out and everything, it wasn't. It didn't look that bad on paper. Um, that was a low for me. Like I was like contemplating like quitting then, like even not even going. Um, and then after that, like a month after or whatever, I like took a chance on, or they took a chance on me. But uh, I played with like Evasion and Swirly, and I became like really, really. Those are like my best friends now. Um, so like that was a time, and then two two times in MW, uh, at the beginning of the game, I went into it with uh, the first two K. I was actually with Sam and Nova and a couple others, and that team like we got it did pretty decent, but that team like broke apart, and like after that, I was stuck with like running with like the just the worst kind of teams. I, I was getting egoed by people that who just got last the champs this year. Like it was bad. Like I yeah. I wanted to quit. Yeah, and then uh, Evasion was just like, "Yo, we're gonna we're gonna drop Majaden here soon. You should uh, you should come play with us." And that's another thing of like friends right there. Like if I didn't friend that right there, I I, I probably would have quit. And those guys picked me up on a Thursday, and then we win the two K like that weekend. Like, and then I was I was set. I was back. Like, so I almost quit there, but a friend a friend circle that I kind of made back in BO4 just saved me, and then. Mid year, when I was on the six G team with Awakening and them, and I was a I was an ass hat, and I got dropped because of it. Um, after that, and still, and I got dropped, and like it was like two weeks later, they announced like the online event, so it wasn't one Ks anymore, and it was like six tournaments straight where I was just getting like T sixteen, sixteen. So I was just stuck in that bubble. Like that that six G team was like my stock at the time was like my stock was good enough to like get me on that team, but after that, like nobody wanted to play with me. And I was stuck on this T16 bubble, cycling players, cycling teammates, and um, sure, like I, you know, I befriended a couple cool people, but like uh, I almost quit then too. And then finally, I got <clears throat> I got the offer to get back on the, the team uh, with Stamino or make a new team with him. So yeah, those are the, those are the th- three times I almost quit. It, it, that, those two times this year were pretty rough. Uh, like I was overthinking everything and. It was bad, but I mean, it ended up working out. So, so I'm I'm curious. Uh, from, <coughs> the difference between your teams from the beginning of MW to the end of MW. Uh, can you kind of like shed some light on some of the preparation that you did, other than like going through the <coughs> and bombs, like oh. kind of like the, like the things that you know the average person wouldn't think of doing. I actually was talking about this the other day. I was talking about this with Llama. Um, I actually like, I cannot believe the way I prep now for tournaments. Like, if I would have been doing that the, this entire time, I, I could have been doing way better. I mean, like, the POQ in BO4, I don't think we even watched VODs. And that wasn't even, like, that wasn't even crazy not to do, like, with like those people I was playing with and everything. And we, like, we didn't even think about it. And we just instead just fought with each other. It was just a trio of fighting with each other. Um, but, like, <clears throat> yeah. I mean, at the beginning of the year, th- I mean, those guys, that Aspire team, like, we, I mean, we prepped... You know, we we would watch VODs. I mean, there was a couple times where we were kind of, like, undeady to watch VODs. Or it was kind of hard to get to watch VODs. But, like, I mean, the prep was still kind of good. But, like, that uh that that update that happened, the DOM update, like, that really screwed us. Because we were, like, 300-point clubbing teams in DOM. Um, and then that uh that meta change hurt us, too. I mean, we had me and Dave Patty, like, uh, and I think Dave was, like, one of the... I think he was like a top three mini R this year, um, when he was running a mini R, and um, I think that really sucked. Um, but I mean, like the prep compared to then to now, it, it was insane. Like the like the prep. I mean, it got to the point towards the end of the year where we're like, it was normal to be watching like a VOD every night, like the last few months. And I mean, I like that. Um, I mean, I wish I'd been doing that forever. I mean, there I, I there was events for years like World War Two, IW. Freaking BO4 even where we were going to events and not watching VODs, and that was just like normal at that level of the community that I was in. Like, right. And now it's, I mean, I, I like how it is now. So, but, if you were to sit down right. and make a routine for your team as to like, if we do these steps every day, we got all the bases covered, and you know, we're still trucking along, what would that be? Um, <clears throat> I think just what we had this year, like, okay. right towards the end, like, just get on. I mean, I like to, I mean, I, so like what I do personally is I'll like wake up at 12 every single day. The scrums are at two. Except for and so that gives me like two hours to be ready. <clears throat> and like, so like the night before I try and sleep like three, 4 a.m. 
I, I try and sleep as long as so I can have eight hours. Like, because mm-hmm. so, no matter what, I'm waking up at twelve. Okay. So it's up to me to go to sleep at a certain time. Um, but I would just do the same. Like, just I would want everyone to be on at least an hour before. Because I don't like people using the first map or the first two maps or those warmer maps. And I had I did have teammates that did that. Um, and I, I don't really like that. I like everyone to be warmed up so those two s- maps aren't wasted. Um, and just go to three scrims and just watch a VOD after. Either watch, like, uh, we would watch either. Um, sometimes it depended. Like, if we had a day where we just, just like, shit on everyone, we would still watch and just make sure that we want to copy that. So uh, that would, that's be, that'd be the same thing. Just do your three scrims and watch a VOD after. I would like, I mean, I've had a couple teammates who don't like doing this, but like I personally liked at towards the end of the year doing two heart, uh, two respawns and then the S and D scrim. Um, <clears throat> but well, I mean, a couple, like, I mean that gets repetitive every single day. I few teammates that didn't like that. Um, but we were also, I think we were the best S and D team the last like four months. I mean, like, I wanted to keep that up. I mean. So we've kind of been on the topic of preparation. And I know on when we did the podcast with Gunna, um, I would kind of asked him what he feels like as a coach. Like, he kind of – what kind of stuff he takes off the players' hands. So I was kind of curious from your perspective, like the player perspective, what having a coach can help with. Because I know a lot of teams may deny coaches um, because they think – they know it all and like they don't need that extra set of eyes um yeah so like honestly a coach is what like i mean a coach is extremely useful it does he, he does a lot of the stuff that the players are too lazy to do that's like but they are needed because the players still won't do that stuff um i mean like the recording the vods thing isn't that important like anybody can do that but like making sure keeping the team on track of like uh, what needs to be worked on? Like a lot of teams and a lot of good teams still just get on and they play through the motion. They just try and quote unquote win this scrim. Um, and so, like one thing Derek would do was actually like he would actually have us focus on something that we need to work on on a map. Or at the beginning of the week, he would have a like an actual like he, in our Google Doc, he would have something where it would be like what we need to work on this week. Um, stuff like that. He would keep track of like map stats, like for <clears throat> win loss. Um, so like that with that weekend, we could, you know, change our vetoes if we needed to. Um, yeah, I mean, that was mostly because when he joined, one, one thing I told him that we didn't need was S and D because at the time we were like two events in three events in where we didn't lose an S and D. Um, but like towards the end when like, obviously we need to start saying, change things up. That's another thing. Like he would link us a bunch of pro S and D VODs. I mean, we had this like doc that went around uh, through a couple teams where it had every single pro vod on it. So like every single match of every tournament. So like if you want to go watch, uh, like at the time, like LEG was really good at S and D, and they like let's say they played like Phase Academy. That's a really good vod to watch for S and D. So we would go and click on that, um, and that was like supplied by him. Um, I mean, like that he would help a lot in like that kind of way. Google Doc updating the Google Doc stats. Numbers, right? Making sure we're on track of what we need to. Uh, getting in, getting in between of like someone had a little little pissy fit or a little argument, you get in between. But that wasn't the case that much. Um, so uh, I'm curious. Do you think any pros like? Do you think pros are doing more or something different than the amateurs are? Or like the top amateurs are? Or do you think they're relatively doing the same thing in preparation? Okay. Uh, definitely doing the same thing. Um. Uh, I think that I don't know the saying, but it's like something like you can't catch up to someone running by walking, or I forget how it works, I have, for how it goes. But like you, I, you can't catch up to the pros by doing the same thing. Like you need to be doing more than them. Which I mean, a lot of people, a lot of us are. Like they're only doing like sometimes they only scrim once a day or two times a day. Or I mean, I had the pro sheet where I could see the scrims, so I know what teams to hit up. And like a lot of the teams were like taking breaks a lot. Like especially like if it was a team that didn't play, like they had the break for that their tournament. Um, a lot of teams didn't play that week, or like if a team wasn't playing uh, in the next tournament, but they were still scrimming, they were only doing one two scrims a day. Like it was like people were using that as an excuse to not grind as much. Um, so I definitely say a lot of like the top AM teams did do more. 
but then again, I can't, you know, I don't know what goes on. I don't know what some of the pro coaches do, but I would like, I would like to say playing wise, like we did a, a lot more um, for sure. And yeah, like, you know, playing or working smarter, not harder, but like if you're working way harder while, you know, we're not just scrimming or playing idiots. Like we're actually doing in the work that needs to be done. Um, so I would definitely say a lot of people did more. Uh, I'd like to think. Uh, yeah, right. sure. So what are some ways that you think organizations can help teams that you personally have never seen that you think should be done? Um, I mean, it just depends how much money an org has. Mm -hmm. Like there's going to be a couple orgs that are going to be popping up that I know about that are, there's one that's <clears throat> like that's showing that they're going to have a lot of money. They're funding people flying out, buying them like places in Texas. Like I, I would like to say uh, like having that would be nice from an org, but like uh, in the AM scene, that's not like, mm -hmm. that's not normal. Um, other than that, I can't, I can't really think of anything like else I would want an org to do. Like, I think all the orgs I've had kind of do minimum. Like, I mean, it would be nice to have someone paying for my apartment, but that's not really going to happen or anything until I get a contract. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, the investment with AM teams for orgs is just not kind of not worth it anymore. Yeah, like, um, I mean, yeah, and and it depends on the org too, because I had a lot of orgs just trying to take money from us from champs, like when we were looking for a new org. Like they're trying to take way more than what they're going to pay us, and it's like, at least go even with us. Like, I don't know, there were so many orgs trying to take money like from us. It was weird. Yeah, that actually perfectly yeah. leads into the next thing I was going to ask, and that was <clears throat> with your placing in champs. What are some of the things that you've learned outside of the game <clears throat> that you know are Call of Duty related still that you, like I said, just learned from this whole experience lately? Um, I guess work ethic, like, mm -hmm. cause that would be like the only, only thing really, like, I don't, I don't do anything else. Fair like, enough. I just, I just play the game. Like, um, this is my main focus. Um, until this is not my main focus, I won't be doing anything else. So I, I really, that's, I don't, I can't answer your question. Fair enough. I say work ethic's like the only thing I can say, like. Hey, it answers it, man. So, so uh, this is jumping around topics a little bit, but I'm just curious. Um, I actually want to get all your opinions on it because anyone who's uh, listening, I'm sure, is interested. But uh, you guys all played the Cold War Alpha. I didn't because I was I wasn't able to. I was overseas. But um, I just like if but all of you can name a couple things that you guys th uh, think that you let's just say name one thing you liked and then two things that you think need to change going into the next COD. Uh, we can start with you, Zinx. Um. I liked, I liked the M4. I like the, the the. I think that'll be. I mean, unless they touch everything, but we only had three like three actual ARs available to us. But I think like right now, given the three ARs that were given to us, like that could be the main AR again, and um, it it fit me a lot. Like, BO4, I would say was the only game that didn't fit me. I had like it, best way to explain it is like I had to play to the ICR min, uh play style. The ICR couldn't play to my play style. And so, like, slower many R's, like, Frosty or Mock, like, they were better than me. But, like, Older Tube, MW, like, this game, like, I can be a faster main, which is where I excel. So that's one thing I would say I would like those M4. Two things, um, like, okay, I'm going to say two things that they they already haven't said that they're going to nerf. Um, so they need to change the, the skill-based matchmaking. And... I would say find a way for competitive to like I don't know there needs to be a way to make maps like smaller like Miami would be a good map for competitive if it wasn't so freaking big like I mean they cut off the beach or something like on the map's too big um and that's kind of a waste of a map that looks really good I think uh yeah those are mine too um right, John you know, with the switch to PC, and it kind of backs off of what Zinx was saying, is I think that custom maps could be a really big thing, and that it, there really could be, like in CS, that big community that pro players are playing these fan-made maps. You know, a lot of these maps are just cut-down versions of other pre-game maps that, like I said, the pros end up playing. So I think that community-based maps need to 
be one of those things that you know they talked about in Black Ops Three that they were gonna do on PC, but they just never. I gotta remember that. <laughs> went any further than that? It was like why talk about it and not go anywhere with it? So they've clearly thought about it, and I don't see why they shouldn't. Um, obviously, everybody's issue right now is the map design. Uh, not to the, the largest extent, but you know, what I mean, people do kind of get old of the same old map design. So why not let the fans make the maps that they want to play and let them choose if they want to play it or not. So I think with PC being one of the major things, I think competitive could do a lot of that. Um, I think obviously rank play should be one of those things. I think it's going to be out, <coughs> I'm sure. But um, also like camos. I think people should be able to create their own camos just like paint jobs were back in the day, except be, be able to share them around to people. You know, just little things like that. People want some new freshness to the game that doesn't take a lot to do. You know, just change your camo. Just little things like that just make you want to play the game even more, bro. And, you know, people burn out on COD especially so quick, and I think little things like that just add up. What do you think, Colby? Oh, gosh. Um, oh, shit. I can't think of anything. All right, so one one thing that I like, two things I dislike. Um, one thing I liked was the gunplay, definitely. Uh, it felt like most guns were balanced than kind of like how it normally is. Was that one gun that kind of stands out? Um, and so I guess that kind of leads into one of my negatives, which was the AK. Which, um, I think people were slightly overhyping how bad it was. Like it was pretty bad, but when you, um, like I was using the MP5 a lot, for example. And it, it killed just as fast as the AK, but it just had extra recoil. Um, so, like, one of the things that I was talking to John about over the alpha was, like, everybody's like, this needs, like, a damage nerf. And it's like, like, the damage is fine, it, in my opinion. It just feels like it needs more recoil, so you can't use it kind of like a Maddox, for example. Um, and uh, second negative, man. I personally was a fan of how slow the nades were. Um, they took a while to throw and it took a while to go off. So even if you cooked it, like you were sitting there for five, five plus seconds, it's trying to get the annoying right trying to throw a grenade back at someone, bro. <laughs> You'd never worry. Yeah. It wasn't and really that long. Yes, yes bro. If was, someone threw a grenade it, at you, you could not throw it back at them. Even if they just tapped it, it took it, that long. It just felt like. Like, for example, if we played the alpha as the competitive game for the year, I feel like nades wouldn't be competitively viable except for, like, pre-nades. Like, it wouldn't be a situation where you could, um, like, if you're one shot, you can toss a try and nade off. somebody. Yeah. No, I agree. Um, so, obviously, yeah. you're... Oh, no. Go ahead, Zanx. What are you saying? I was going to say, I was going to touch on the, the gun thing. Like, definitely, uh, I think the AK was fine other than... In, they need to change it from being like a do it all gun. Like we don't. Yeah. That's the only like it needs to be more recoil because like most of the guns did kill like pretty much the same, and that is a good sign of a cod like a cod for like all the guns to be fun to be used in pubs mm -hmm. and whatnot. Um. But yeah, just they need to touch on the. I mean, I was watching well, gameplay of it. I was watching gameplay of some of the subs, and I I think it was like the Type Two something. But that gun like yeah, was like an like AR, but like <laughs> that gun yeah, beamed across another, the whole yeah. map. It's another like. Thing. That gun looked like it took no skill to shoot with. Yeah, there there just needs to be like a change for uh some of the subs because like, um, like Krim tweeted like a fully stacked leveled up M4 would still lose to an AK that's not even like fully stacked right. or any of the subs really like. Um, the, I mean the one thing I did notice mm -hmm. is that this game isn't as bad for um, like camera sliding, mm -hmm. as, as for like if I'm an AR pre on a heady preaming something. Or doesn't have to be in heady. It's not as bad as it, as it used to be. Like, and they already said they're nerfing the slide cancel, but like, it already wasn't bad. Like subs already like you, you couldn't really slide on so an AR. Like it, it's just how it should be. Um, so I did like that. But. Yeah, I remember seeing your tweet probably to the alpha. Um, and you had talked about. I think you were replying to someone, but you had talked about how you feel like when it comes to competitive, we'll see a lot more main ARs that'll have a stacked M4. And then your sub players are probably gonna yeah. go with the perk greed. Yeah, it, if that's allowed, someone said it was gonna be uh, G8, not allowed. I just don't see why that wouldn't be allowed. Like, I don't even see it as like that bad. Like, if um, because you're it's a there's a negative into doing that obviously because you're not running right. the, the double perks. Um, 
but I, I definitely don't see a use for um, the mini R like um, running the double perks. I like I just because the only the only ones that are really viable for double perks is the the first column, the, the attack and flak. Like, and I think there's I didn't I didn't read it too much, but I think there was another one that lets you like pick your three perks no matter the the thing. Yeah, and I think that might be something that everyone might. Yeah, use. so you could like stack it all up on like the. Flat, you could one, run flat right. tack and then ninja. Oh, really? uh, yeah. yeah, and then wasn't the last one like an extra tack and nade or something like that? Yeah, there's know? always been one of those. Like, I, it, and I messed around like my classes to see like uh, which attach I would take off because I mean I'm, I was using freaking eight or nine, however many it was, and I think you can only use five um, when you don't have that. Um, so I mean I could see that thing being like the everything used, but like. I my I would still be down to still stack my gun to have like that advantage. Mm -hmm. Like yeah, I'm not gonna have flack or one or the other, but uh, you know it's something that as a mini R I'll just you know, hold the L on. One so thing do that... you guys do you guys all like it? Sorry, John, I keep cutting no, you no, off. You're but good. Just last thing, do you guys actually like the perkery thing? Because before when I, when I saw that they uh they had that in the reveal, um I was super sketchy about it. So y'all think it's like a good thing or? I mean, I, yeah, because like there's negatives and positives to having like all of them, so. I, mean, I, don't, right. I don't mind it. Go ahead, John. Um, should I kind of forget where I was going to go now? <laughs> I was thinking oh, about shit. the Perk Reed. <laughs> um, no, so one of the things that really boggles my mind is that they keep making all these attachments that were always perks for the longest time. Like on the M4, there's one of the attachments that's like toughness. It's like if we have completely unusable perks, but then we have all these attachments, why not just like make one of these a perk like i think yeah. toughness is the stupidest thing in call of duty to begin with it's always been one of the biggest debates of flint should be in there or not whatever so it's like the fact that <clears throat> do you think it's more balanced that the ar is an attachment for toughness rather than every player being able to use it as uh, a perk because i didn't get the ak max so i don't know what attachments the ak had but um i know i don't and i don't know about the subs either but i'm like then nothing to touch on that too is that the M4 had an attachment to let you drop shot? Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, like I don't, I'm, I'm sure every gun has that, but like, I imagine, I'm, imagine you don't want to use that. So then, like, I mean, you're, I mean, I tried it, and like, when you, drop shotting is fine, but like, when you stand up, it's like BO4. Like, you put your hand on the ground, so it's not good. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, but Did like, imagine that becomes like YYing though. Like right before they stand uh, up. I didn't, uh, yeah, there's like a weird glitch. I if you YY watch. right before you stand up, it it like cancels out that stand up animation. Of course there is. Yeah, but not that one. Take off, but... off. Yeah, I, I want to answer that question actually, John, because yeah. uh, I'm not sure if it was just asked towards things or not. But regardless, um, I think that because like with MW, there's a crap ton of attachments. I mean, there seems to be like a lot coming in this game as well. And, like I see where they're going because they want to be able to customize the gun, right? But you just said something that kind of like made me think of something. It's like they're taking attachments that should be perks, and why not like like you said, just make a bunch of perks, make it more like because in every COD, I mean, like it's literally the same like five rotation of perks, like cold blooded, lightweight, flak, tack, and like dead silence. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and then like there's like right. always that one like random one that's thrown in. Why not just make it a bunch of uh, perks and then actually have attachments mean something towards your gun? I don't know how. I, I think going for it because I feel like most of those attachments aren't even going to be used. You know, we're we're going to stick the same six attachment rotation like we always will, and then we're going to keep it at that. We so. need we need the ghost system back. Yep. All those perks. I agree. That shit was fire. I agree. Like, with that. I don't I don't I don't like having all these different attachments. I think that's really stupid. Um, yep. I think there should be a pick ten. Um, they're making it. They're making things way more complicated than it needs to be. Um. Yeah. But, I mean, I hate looking at my percentages of my gun. Trying to figure out like what's like. Yeah, it's probably... yeah right. Oh my I god. Can not do quick math like that. So, what are some ways that you think that they can implement change to our community to keep people from say burning out is a very big issue in our community, especially compared to other esports because of the repetitiveness of our game. So, what are some ways that you think that we can shake that up while still maintaining the core competitive integrity of Call of Duty as it is? Um, they need to not change things. Like, yeah, like, like that's that's the thing. They think that we don't want the same thing, but like, thing like prestiges. Like, why did why are prestiges yeah. out? Like, like that's something like to keep people back in. Like, we want prestiges. Um, one thing I want, at least for competitive, at least uh, in this aspect, is what Valorant does, where and um, 
in Valorant custom games, you can choose what server you want to play on. Mm. Like, they have like nine or ten different servers. And that's and like, if we're going to PC, there is no excuse that Activision can't do that. Um, now that we're on PC, that's one of the advantages of being on PC is that we can do something like that. So that needs to be a thing that in, just intriguing more competitive people. Like, Okay. But, so, I mean, yeah, public wise, it just needs to stop changing things that like no, no mm-hmm. one wants changed. Like, pretty much it. Okay, so with the way things have gone the last couple months, and especially the MW season things, you know, 2020 is the year of change. Um, we don't have lands like we did before, and local lands are obviously kind of out of the picture as of right now. So what are some ways you think that we can bring more of, um, I guess, a desire for people <clears throat> that are outside of the league, you know, not looking to go pro but still want to compete? What are some ways that we can bring some of that competitive aspect? Um, honestly, this year was, I mean, when they started doing the online events, um, oh, there was an influx of people, um, like, especially, the, like, for the people that were high seeds, um, we went from, we went from 250 brackets to 500 brackets again, because the only time 500 brackets happen are at the beginning of the games, where everyone tries to come back, um, and... Uh, there was a lot of influx when that happened, and that happened for a while. There was an extra round in the tournaments, 500 bracket. So honestly, this need to have like the same system as they did last year. Um, just, I mean, I don't, I didn't mind it being every weekend, but they could do every other week. I think every every like weekend was what was why it was so stressful. I mean, it depends also on the game. Like, if I enjoy the game, then I'm, I might not care. But MW, it was it was a lot. Mm-hmm. It was pretty. It was pretty stressful. Um, only having one off day, which was for my team. If uh, if we made it to Sunday, our off day would be Monday. We some if we didn't for some reason make it to Sunday, then our off day would be Sunday. Like, and sometimes that one day wasn't enough. Um, yeah. But yeah, I honestly think they could just do the same thing. Mm-hmm. Probably like. I mean, more money would bring more people in. I definitely think uh, with how many with how many events there were and how much money there were supposed to be in those, like, if you think about it, those events were split among all three regions mm-hmm. when, like, originally those were going to be, you know, 10 plus K, 15 K is, like, just for here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, um, maybe more money into it. But, uh, because, like, I could get... I could get, like, third in... Cup or se- like yeah, I can get like third or four. I can get no, I can get fourth in a cup. That's what it was. I can get fourth in a cup and still make more than the second place in a homestead. Like, which I understand that that was split up for the midseason event, but like I don't know, that was yeah. I think, I think that's the one aspect they could have different. It's just make all like there's no cups, just like all homesteads, but make it more money. Like make more money in each one, a little bit better. So. Yeah, I think I remember seeing somewhere that um. The whoever it was that won like the two v two gunfight, whatever that whole thing was, was like they joke. made they made more money than uh Triumph did from Challenger yeah. Finals. Yeah, like that's just uh, so just in the face. So kind of speaking on maybe trying to increase the prize pools. Do you think we could ever see crowdfunding in the Call of Duty? I mean, that's what uh, I was watching. Uh, I think it was like the Hex and Astro, like their podcast, or whatever, and they talked about that. It, it needs to happen. Um, oh, yeah. I mean, just for the pro scene alone, because if it, it improves the pro scene, it'll improve our scene. Like, and I think this year will be improved just because of how many pros are going to be down into challengers now. There's going to be a lot more people with a say on a lot of these things. So, um, I think it'll be better for us this year. Um, just depends on uh what they can do, but yeah, crowdfunding would be huge. Um, I would love for that to happen. It's successful in every other game that does it. I don't know why we don't do it. Activision, they're, they're a billion dollar company. They can afford it. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, what? D- Dota 2 got up to what, like 40 million last year or something like that? Yeah, it's ridiculous. Something insane. Yeah. I mean, Call of Duty has so much potential with all the stuff they could do. It's just like Activision doesn't want to take, like, I guess, like the leap. Yeah, I think that honestly, I mean, it depends. I don't know how many people actually play like Dota in League. I, mean, I know it's a lot, but like, if we had crowdfunding, it would actually, like, I'm pretty sure we could compare, like we could, you know, go toe to toe with those prizes. We definitely get bigger than CS:GO. I don't see us 
we're nowhere near Mo any of the two MOBAs. Those guys, those are like, because I yeah, like once you actually get into like the community, you kind of realize how big it is. Like it's yeah. like, it, like their cinematics team is like oh yeah, that's in the dragon. Dude, holy shit, bro! They have so much like money poured into their game for just like extra shit, just to like brand their game out. It's not even to make it good. Like, yeah, I'm telling you, the balance team is still good in their game, and it's the worst part of their whole like their whole team. It's crazy how much money goes into that game and yeah. quality. You know, even good. though like yeah, I, I, Call of Duty doesn't put as much work into that type of shit, but even then, I feel like COD can surpass CS:GO. Like I. Genuinely you definitely could the fan, the fan base especially i mean yeah. like that's the thing like everybody who owns a console owns call of duty mm -hmm. it's just like it's something that just everyone especially has. kids our age college yeah. students man high school yeah, yeah. Uh, just, everyone right. has it like i mean maybe like kids now it's a little bit different but like oh, i mean just mostly everyone has it like uh, call so, of duty was I, the yeah. original fortnite everybody knew about it everybody yeah. wanted it yeah we could definitely be surprised csgo but I, mean, I don't know why they don't do it. I don't know, like, any of, like, like legal stuff or anything, why it would stop it or why it can't happen. But they need to do it. They're so, already making too much money, so. So what is your favorite thing that another eSport does that COD cousin, doesn't currently do that you want to see COD do? Like, the number one thing. Um, are we crowdfunding? Yeah. Fair enough. Maybe that's more of a game thing. Um... I mean, I guess like like what CS has for um, like Face It or what I said about Valorant with their mm -hmm. competitive games like the mm -hmm. servers. I mean, that stops so many issues. Like, there's so many issues every single week where it's like hosting issues. Like, there's some teams that you can't play, you can't stream against just because of the hosting situation. Like, I mean, for a while, like when we didn't have Gintroid, who was Texas, and we had like our only central host was like Minigram and um, like Kentucky. Like, some people said okay to that, and some people like would just despise it. Like, um. I mean, this year, like I, I won't have that problem, but like a lot of people are gonna still have that issue, and that's a, people love to make it. It's not excuses, like people like making excuses about that host, like stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Like with servers, I mean, it just it s stops that issue. It stops a lot of issues. I mean, uh, I think that's the one of the main reasons for PC this year is at least for the pro league that they're gonna do like server oh, things yeah. like that, um, and they need to do it properly because having whatever the issues were where there was like two LA teams or whatever playing on a freaking server yeah. across the world or yeah, one Texas closer to another or some shit. Yeah. yeah or one closer to another team like that's a, that's the thing they need like they need to just um either like have the teams play in the locations that they want to play in so that you have you know actual proper servers to veto from because I think they were like they had a list of like 10 or whatever mm -hmm. but they would choose three for that match and like it would be like it wouldn't it would be a three that weren't technically fair for like both teams. Mm -hmm. So like they just need to have like either the big list or whatnot, or just have a main server and everyone just suck it up and deal with it. Like if they just had a main server in Kansas. Or... Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, so like... with the widespread of servers and obviously more servers are going to be made throughout the upcoming months and years. Do you think it'll get to a point that I'm, I, I don't want to be too dramatic and I, I don't mean this to too much of a literal sense, but kind of like CS in a way, like, it's almost, you think of these players like, oh, he's Polish, he's probably really fucking good, or he's Russian, he's filthy. Do you think it'll get to that point with COD, as in, like, since the servers are, are going to be more localized, people are going to be like, oh, I don't want to play some kid from fucking Louisiana, like, I'm up here in New York. So then, obviously, all the New York kids are going to be super good, the Louisiana kids are going to be bad. Do you think there's going to be kind of, like, that point times 10, or do you <clears throat> think it's kind of kind of stay where it is right now? Um... People in the same country, I think it's still, still like that. But like, um, for people that live out of the country, um, like I, I mean, I had a little issue happen this year where people like I I got people forfeited for playing from Central America, and I had my Twitter just flooded by all of them, like all everyone from Central America, Mexico, just hating on me. That's crazy. You know, and it was just like, I don't care. Like I'm sorry, but like you're not allowed to play in this tournament and just suck it up. Like, um. And that's just the rules, like, and I, and I don't want to deal with that. I don't want to play for people from that. So, like, one thing I would say is they need to make, I don't know, like something for people to play down there or whatever. Like, that's the only issue I have with people, uh, for like location wise, like what you're just saying. Like, I don't think it's just, like it'd be a, ever like a state thing. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, sure, people, you know, there there are, you know, the big three, the big joke states, but. 
location wise like that i would just say like people from like south america or whatever like i mean i had like when the when the tournament started having the extra people come in um no joke for like five weeks in a row i had two sets of teams from central america i had a team from chile and then i put a team from iraq I, I, i'm not kidding iraq like I, I looked i looked at my qs or whatever on my router and it literally they were all from iraq and like they uh we like shit on them bad and like and i like we got used to checking our pings in the early rounds and when they would go host so we had to go join their lobby the crowd and join spawn into the game and we're all on like 350 pings and so i leave immediately and i saw that they were all in iraq that is so and so i got them forfeited and then when they got forfeited i'm getting spammed on my psn messages in all arabic like i thought i was getting like a hit <laughs> squad on me it was bad like that it, they need Game battles or CDLs or whatever, like, somebody needs to stop that from happening. Like, I mean, there was people that were actually losing to some of the, like, some of this, the people in Central America. I mean, like, oh, it happened to um, Risky's team. Like, the people that I forfeited one week, a weekend later, they played in it again, beat Risky's team, and, like, Risky's team couldn't, or they beat them in a map or whatever, and Risky's team couldn't <coughs> forfeit them. That's so like, fucked. Us as players, we shouldn't be dealing with, like, like this shit should be already handled. They shouldn't be able to yeah. sign up, like, no matter, I mean, that like, so, like and that's the thing, too, is some refs can IP check and some say they can't. Like, that's just not, like, that's yeah, not bro, true. That's the most yeah, bullshit like, thing ever, because I have I live yeah. in Maryland, and Maryland for the longest time until literally just this year was illegal. And, like, if I even opened CMG, yeah. I could play on it. But, it, you know, if I wanted to withdraw, it wouldn't let me. They would IP bam me or whatever. Whenever I would get into a tournament, I got fucking IP checked round one every single yeah. time. Even if I had a VPN or what, bro. There was no evading for John Graceless. I could not do S and D. But how come people from South America can do that shit? Like, yeah, I, I it's yeah. And like, that's the thing too is like when I got them forfeited, like I showed them, I showed a ref proof of like my QoS showing that they live down there, and like Risky did the same thing, and they're just like, oh, that's not valid proof. So like, we literally have like different refs that work every weekend or something like some are idiots and some are actually like you know they're actually smart Bro, i'm crazy. curious i'm curious speaking on that because like shit like that is ridiculous i mean like cmg i write a whole essay on things i have a problem with them but um and honestly all of those uh i guess online tournament sets but um i'm curious with like the cdo uh do you think that i guess um i guess it's Treyarch this year but do you think the companies that are making the cods are listening to the pros enough I think it depends on the the devs. I think like Treyarch always has a better job of like listening. I think this year there's like an even better job, um, because they have like the newer dev, which is like Tony Flame. Um, Ivanahar can actually focus on multiplayer this time around because he just focused on Blackout last time. But now they they don't really have to worry about that because it's Warzone. It's already like kind of handled. Um, and then like with last year, I mean, we had a dev who said that COD ruined competitive yeah. or competitive ruin cod like and i actually think that he got so upset with the competitive like the community uh, like uh, to a point where he was doing shit on purpose like to the point where like the dom glitch that got fixed after all the teams were knocked out at champs and there was only four teams left the or five patch yeah or the mp5 patch champs. yeah or like stuff like that i mean they he i i genuinely think that he hated us so much from this year that he purposely did that and i mean he had every right for us to hate i mean like you don't you know, you shouldn't be a COD dev and then say that competitive ruins COD and, like, not support us at all. I mean, like, he was literally catering to the Warzone community. That's why no stock got nerfed. I mean, that was, like, a literally, like, no, like, and no one even complained about War. Like, people who streamed Warzone never even complained about it. It was just something that, like, I don't know. They they said it was, like, a Warzone catering thing, but, like, I didn't see the issue with it. So yeah, the reason the reason why I, uh, we all we all jumped in the game, uh, <laughs> just just a quick follow up. But the reason why I asked that is because I was thinking about it, and I think uh, like doing something kind of like a players association, kind of working with the devs, or maybe not working with the devs, but like getting like insight where they can kind of like directly contact them, and uh, every week or two or every update, kind of give their feedback. Uh, I think would be like something uh, that'd be really good for our community. I don't know if that's possible. Um, but back in the day, I there know was a that message board BO4, that you could post to. Yeah, I know in BO4 that they had a. It was either a chat or they just had a dev that they would DM. That's a few pros like knew and talked to. Um, 
I, I think World of Two maybe. I think Sledgehammer was better. Like Sledgehammer was, I think, was good about like the community too, especially when Rambo came along. Um, but yeah, Infinite Warfare they're just they're a bunch of asshats, honestly. Like, so do you they, think because Infinite Warfare is a bunch of asshats, like you're saying, do you think that? there is the possibility that it could go to like just Treyarch for competitive or do you think it's going to stay the same every year like we switch it up keep rotating because everybody just at this point we're sick of fucking Infinity War man uh, <laughs> I mean like I don't even I don't know how the contracts work yeah. or anything I don't know how that works um I mean it would have like it would have to be the thing where you just play the COD for two years until the next Treyarch's out but it's like you depend like what if that I mean I don't know if I could have played BO4 for two years exactly. like, personally for me um, but I don't know. They need to fire that guy, <laughs> fire Seacott, um, fire that one girl too. There was a bunch of them. Cause it, it's not just Seacott. There was a bunch of them that didn't like competitive and that didn't help us at all. Mm -hmm. So, um, and they need to do a, a whole withdrawal of all of them. It's hire new people. They don't see that happening. Um, or then maybe they go a different route. If it depends on depends on Activision, really it depends on like how much they actually care. Mm -hmm. If they actually care, then um, they could probably get something done. They could like yeah. I don't know, change, have them have different attitudes about it or whatnot. I think like a lot of like those guys, like like I think he said that stuff because he's like tired of us like nitpicking the, the game, mm -hmm. and I feel like. I like it's like imagine you make something and then you have like a whole community like just like trashing on it like you're gonna get pissed like you're gonna get tired of that shit. Um, mm -hmm. but like it's also on them to be able to handle that and take criticism and that guy definitely couldn't. That guy's a man child. Yeah. Yeah. One thing I uh, going back on the one dev that said uh, esports were in COD. One thing I don't understand about that is I feel like there's just so many financial opportunities within esports like i was on twitch because i was gonna go watch um the rocket league it's like their own challengers um that was this past weekend and i click on the esports page on twitch did you guys know there is esports for farming simulator yeah i've seen that i've seen that, that on twitter so <laughs> you that was a joke. tournament it was, that was a joke i was mind blown I yeah i was gonna go pro in that and get picked up bro. in the league yeah right that's a, one of the things I wanted to ask you about. I forgot to is that whole opinion with mental and everything. What do, what do you feel about that? Um, so I actually know that he is good. Mm -hmm. I remember him being like nasty when he tried playing in Bo4. Mm -hmm. Um, and like, yeah, like it's a slap in the face. And I, they were they were actually going to pick up somebody that I know, mm -hmm. and it's a huge slap in the face to him. Damn. Um, but I also understand like. I forgot who tweeted it, but it is a business thing. Like, and he is gonna end up paying off. Like, that's the oh, thing. Yeah. Like, it, it was a yeah. low. It was a low. Yeah, it was like low risk, high reward. Low, yeah, like um, yes. or no, it was a, it was like a big. It's a big risk because they, a lot of people don't know. But then, like the people who do know that he's actually good. Um, and I mean, it's gonna pay off, and he's gonna be end up worth more than what they paid. Like. Or what they're paying him now so i mean like they're locking him down so i mean it was pretty smart it just sucks with the timing of like there's no expansion oh, yeah. teams this year 44 that's the only thing that's bad about it. it it just sucks the timing i understand like why they did it and everything um it sucks that the person who was going to get it didn't get it because that's just one less person i had to compete with for a spot um but yeah i mean i understood why they did uh, I'm, I wasn't as pissed. I mean, I, I was only pissed because of the person who didn't get it. I mean, what isn't he like the most the winningest player in Gears or something yeah, like he's, that? Yeah, he's like the best player or something like that. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I remember he did. Yeah, he tried playing at the beginning of BO4 and he was really good. Um. So, I don't know. And, like, yeah, people are roasting that's different. It's like three P and like whatever this third person. It's with a shotgun or whatever, but it's like. He's the best player in an esport, which that's still like reaction also time. That's still yeah, console. Yeah. That's reaction time. Like that's yeah, that's knowing like worth that. Ethic, knowing how to like win, like that's just all like. Yep. Like, who cares about stuff? Yeah. Um. So yeah, I mean, I, I found it funny, oh. but it's also like, you know, it sucks, but I understand. So. Yeah. No, I agree, and 
it's looking like we're getting to the point that Colby is ready for round 11, man. Round 11 time. Well, so, the dog's going crazy. Historically, the question... Is excited for round 11? <laughs> historically, the question has always been, uh, like, what are your three off-season tips? But I think I wanted to change it. I was kind of curious, over your years of playing, what is, like, your most memorable playing moment? So it could be winning a certain game, it could be an upset if we win a certain tournament etc um i'll say two i think on land and then online i think land was probably uh i'd say like seattle and world War two i think it was like my best of an ever i don't know what was on with me i was on like two hours of sleep and i was just like it was like 45 plus kills every hard point and plus kills every s and i was just like on another level um, I was getting like back to back like turn on some people like like it, it, I don't know it was just like that was the best event I've ever had playing, um, and we like lost to E6 barely and that was the one event that E6 like I don't know if you guys watched back then where E6 like actually finally had like their run and did really well and like that could have been like us like like the only good team they played in the open, um, but yeah that would be like my best like on like on land thing, online. Probably would be uh, this last team I had. Like, we only won once. I mean, I, I technically could say twice because of the 6G team, but like, we were consistently really good, consistently doing good. And like, how us not losing an SD in like seven tournaments and like that team and how good we can stay consistently having f like four different fifths, um, that was a really good time. And I enjoyed that team. I felt like that was I was finally on a real team. I mean, my Aspire team was a real team, but those guys like that was an actual real team where I was a real teammate, not an asshole. Like, um, it was the first genuine team where like everyone's like supported each other, trusted each other. Uh, we were down so many times, like in a in a series or whatnot, and came back. Like I remember we were <clears throat> we were terrible, like dog shit, just complete fucking trash for two weeks in a row. Because of in certain and we figured it out. It was like right before champs too, <clears throat> but we got we got fourth and then we came back the next week and got so top sixteen. That was the like the only time we actually did bad with that team, and it was just because of like roles and whatnot. We figured it out right after that. Um, but like that that when we got third, that was us purely like just clutching up, being down. Oh, we were down oh two in like three different series that tournament and can't reverse swept. Like I mean. Even in champs, like we were down a lot. I mean, we were down one tier, a one four against UIU, uh, map five at champs, and came back and won that. And we ended up winning like six fours. I don't know, six four, six five, but like, oh, uh, that team, like, that was a genuine, like, real team that I, I was a part of. And hopefully at the end of this game, it'll just be like that. So. All right, man. Thank you so much for coming on. You had a lot to share. Yep. And I hope yeah. everybody listening took a lot from this. Is there any last words that you have to say <clears throat> for anyone listening or watching today? Um, yeah, I mean, like people ask me, like, you know, how to uh, how to come up and you know how to get into it. And does like I would say this is doesn't matter how good you are, just don't be an asshole. I was an asshole for like two years, and it didn't do good for me at all. It, it hurt me extremely. Um, you can look at people honestly, like like Gunless, like. I mean, he was known to be a bad teammate, and it doesn't matter how good you are, you can be the best in the game, and you still get dropped, you know? So um, I'll just see, act like a normal human being. Don't be an asshole, you know? That's the best thing I can say. Right, I have man. experience on it, so. All right, man. I appreciate it so much, man. Have a great rest yep. of your day. Appreciate it. Yep. All right, man. Everyone stay safe. Peace.